Ah, Didi Kush. Didi libidili, Didi libidili, Didi libidili. Hello everyone and welcome to the CM Kozeman special on miniature UAPs or also known as budgie ball lightning, the cutest unexplained weather phenomena. Yes everyone, if you've been following this channel for any length of time, you know one of my chief interests is reports of extremely obscure incidents, especially about maybe the weather or related unexplained atmospheric phenomena, which is the acronym used these days, and I'm recording in uh, August 2023, which is the acronym used these days for UAPs, which many people confound and confuse with UFOs. But no, actually any strange thing in the air could be considered a UAP. And here we have the report of the smallest, tiniest, budgiest UAP ever to share with you. But before we begin, if you're a newcomer, please don't forget to subscribe to this page and click the little fucking bell icon so you get some more notifications. Also, you will see some links below where you can donate to my Patreon account or maybe buy me a coffee or buy some of the amazing CM Kozeman merchandise to keep the budgie food flowing. Yes, everyone, I, I really like when I read about this phenomenon, I was really awestruck because I have never read anything quite like this. Many descriptions of UAPs or strange atmospheric events are either like quite mysterious, like very strange lights in the upper atmosphere or uh, fans of light rotating underwater or there are even like scarier or weirder cases such as the inverary entity which looks like a floating ribbon attached to a strange instrument and apparently this was observed by a lady somewhere in scotland if you look at my prior videos you can see a link to this incident but this one the little budgie goddamn budgie uap was just so cute and adorable and it was completely harmless and another thing with this channel is that i pride in making first-hand research or maybe this is actually a second-hand research because the researcher who wrote this down already is an amazing author his name is william r corliss that's c-o-r-l-i-s-s -S. And this account comes from William Corliss' Handbook of Unusual Natural Phenomena, Eyewitness Accounts of Nature's Greatest Mysteries. So one thing you must know about William Corliss, and I am also linking his site in the video description and in the pinned comments. One thing you must know about this guy is that he spent all of his life collecting reports of strange things about any fields of study, ranging from weird and mundane cases like experiments where water was observed to boil at strange temperatures, to bizarre bi biological phenomena such as chickens with lips and stuff like that. He really spent his lifetime cataloging these events and he published loads and loads of books. Unfortunately, many of these are out of print in the day, but if you live in the States, you still have a very high chance of finding them in second-hand book sales or by going on to these second-hand book selling websites such as alibris.com. I really recommend everything and anything by William Collis and here he documents the little goddamn budgie ball lightning UAP. Okay, so this is literally a sphere of strange light the size of a quail's egg that floats around like a little bird and in some cases it even touches people's hands and other body parts. How cute. I would love to have a pet like that. So the report comes from page 22 of this amazing book. And here, let's go on reading. Evidently, miniature ball lightning is some sort of electrical induction phenomenon, such as, ele such as those related to intense electrical fields generated outside of storms, resulting in small globes of ionized air. Two of these curious manifestations are reported in the following paragraphs. Incident 1. Are you ready? All right, two English ladies were sitting at a table during a rainstorm with the window open and one of them said, Ow! And then as one of the ladies took up a knife to cut bread, 
because they were cutting bread and having tea during a rainstorm with the window open. I'm really always surprised at the odd specificity of these reports. Like if you see something interesting such as a budgie sized UFO, would you really take care to describe the window was open and there was a thunderstorm outside? But maybe it was like a springtime or like summertime thunderstorm in which case okay that's kind of explainable explainable i guess but so it's a summer storm and you're opening the window to let the fresh or air get in cool air get in and you're just cutting some bread and maybe even sipping some tea like i am like the way i'm sipping coffee now mm. Oh, yeah, that's the Cosmonite sip for you. Okay, as one of them was picking up a knife to cut the bread, a ball of light, quite small in size, was seen to flash past the knife, jum, without touching it, onto the table, traveling a distance about 9 inches at an average height of about 3 inch from the table. So this is like one of those little videos of like, you know, there's a table with all the utensils and the little budgie is running on top of the table and doing his cute budgie shits. Only, in this case, if you don't have a cute budgie, but you're a cute little UFO, running past the knife, chuckling, creating hijinks. What a cute, adorable critter. But unlike a budgie, when this UFO touches the tablecloth, the following happens. When the bell touched the tablecloth, it went out with a spitting sound. Or, of course, this is just a joke. When they write about the spitting sound, they're probably talking about something like as if like a spit of candle going out. So there, leaving no mark or trace of any sort. As to the appearance of the bowl itself, it was about the size of a pay, the light encircling it being about the size of a golf ball. So it's like a little goddamn UFO with a little perfectly miniature halo around it. Do you halo, halo, halo? Well, what an amazing, amazing story. The light was intensely bright, like electricity, too dazzling to see through reports this amazing incident from England and this is reported in the 20, 1922 issue of Nature I'm leaving I'm also leaving the exact credits and the citations in the video description and in the pinned comments so you'll get to read more about it if you want but let's break this down for a second like the proximity of a thunderstorm is interesting the way these objects seem to interact with other objects is interesting they seem to quote unquote know where the table is as if the table has some something defining it for this electrical entity to hover above and i always found this interesting i mean how does the ball of light know where the table is or know where the knife is why doesn't it go through the night but actually like wander about on the table for a bit these are all very interesting because if it acted like real lightning you know lightning is like it has a few rules like it goes through the tallest places in some very rare cases it actually issues from the tallest places uh, collecting the electricity from the globe of the earth and radi radiating it above but usually the only thing the lightning cares for is the topmost separation of boundary between air and physical land that's connected to the globe the, that is to say that is earthed but these balls i mean they could have just punched through the ceiling with nobody seeing it but it decides to appear near these ladies and hover about them so it kind of may almost like quote unquote knows where these things are so in that respect this is very interesting and actually if you studied ball lightning reports in any detail you'll see that this is one weird thing they do they know where this they have a physical 3d almost perception of the world around them so in that respect they're interesting and in that in that respect they are proper uaps that is to say unexplained aerial phenomena they really defy our current understanding and by the way we are recording on the 24th of august 2023 and a few weeks back there was a big upheaval about some people testi testifying in the u.s senate about uaps and stuff and it's my one of my firm convictions is that these quote-unquote ufo things are real but they're not aliens or advanced spaceships or something, but they really represent an unknown form of physical phenomena. That is to say, they are naturally occurring very rare things. And like the little, like the little budgy ball lightning on the table, they just seem to know where airplanes are and like they somehow react to these things. But 
when the time comes to leave, these UAPs ignore the laws of physics and just spit out. Anyways, that's not the first case though. There's also, we got another case of little budgie ball lightning from the great US of A. Let's keep on reading. W.J. Humphreys, a meteorologist fascinated by ball lightning, reported this example from America. Mr. Ames was standing on a rug during a thunderstorm with her hand at her waist, one finger more or less extended. Why is she doing like she's striking a pose? She's striking a pose? She's serving cunt? Why is she striking a pose in the middle of a thunderstorm with like one finger extended as if to say, uh, 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 I told you, you asshole. We'd never know. But anyways, she's there standing out, being sassy, serving cunt in the middle of a thunderstorm. And by the way, this is a... I know the C word is kind of problematic, but when I say serving cunt, I mean it in a glorifying way. It is a contemporary form of a meme slang used to designate a woman or woman manifesting human beings who are really sassy. They got lots of character, lots of spunk. So please don't take this term derog derogatorily. And Mrs. Mrs. Ames is standing there with one finger more or less extended as to say, uh, uh, uh. I was about five feet away and noticed the air between her finger and the floor was quivering a lot so that it looked like the hot air over a field. It's like shimmering. Oh my god, I think we got some, some manifestation or some shit coming off. Anyways, she says, I noticed something rise slowly from the floor up towards her finger and then there was for an instant a small oblong fireball about the size of a pecan attached to her finger. By the way, we are served with an amazing illustration here and I am going to reproduce this illustration in the video image so you can all see. It's a sassy looking woman with the one hand on her waist but the finger that's kind of more or less in the air is not her like index finger so she's not saying uh, 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 but she has like her pinky finger up in the air. Once again looking very empowered and like serving the c-word anyway the thing was the size of a pecan <laughs> was not very bright so unlike the british example it was not intensely bright like electricity but it was not very bright it's kind of slow okay don't take it out on the ball he's just a budgie trying his little best it's not his fault and appeared to shine through the haze but then <laughs> then came a flood of lightning outside and a fireball fucking disappeared i inserted the f word here but that was that for this entity once again very unusual phenomenon the the ball of lightning is the size of a little pea it's like the size of a little pigeon or a bird or a pigeon egg or a little goddamn budgie and it's just adorable and cute because of that and it seems to know where people's things are it seems to have interactions with these focal things like this lady's finger i don't know maybe she just had so much like uh yes queen energy that this little budgie just manifested with a haze of shimmering like hot air over a field notice the references used by american and british eyewitnesses by the way to americans it's like the air over a field because they're out there working with their hands well, the British people are indoors, cutting goddamn toasts with their knives. And to them, the ball lightning is like electricity. Because they're indoors kind of people. Back then, in 1922. Anyways, this amazing second case from America comes from the American Philosophical Society proceedings in 1936, during the interwar years. And that's all for the amazing budgie UFO UAP weather phenomenon. I really love these weird unknown details and I really love kind of mining William Corliss books for these anecdotes. There are lots of wild forms of ball lightning referred to in this book, including something that I like to call crocodile ball lightning. But I won't spoil the surprise for that. If you keep on watching to my watching my videos, subscribing to this channel, you will get to you will get to listen to the amazing amazing depictions of the not so cute violent subspecies of crocodile ball lightning i hope you like this episode and once again please consider subscribing and donating to me on patreon or getting me a buy me a coffee uh, see the extended cm Cosman universe and watch all the other videos and please let me know if you had any weird stories like this 
happened to you or people you knew youtube i got 40,000 over 40,000 viewers on this channel so youtube is like actually a great platform for citizen science and citizen data collection also if you know similar cases in the lit literature of your own country or your part of the world please share it with me in the comments as always i also look at anecdotes about ufo cases or like weird folk tales sometimes like in especially folk tales there are also cases of will of the wisps and strange floating balls of light in like very geo specific places and i'm also slightly convinced that these cases also represent some like geologically localized phenomenon like these little goddamn budgie uaps i think we we just have so much more we don't understand about nature and we are just a few more paradigm shifts away from understanding them when we understand them they will not turn out to be aliens or some great cosmic conspiracy but it will just be a weird part of the universe acting out so on that note i thank you all for listening to me and as always have